Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and this is the third video on a series about pivot tables and dashboards. In this video we're finally going to put our dashboard together. In the last two videos we learned how to create our first pivot table and pivot chart and then how to use the pivot tables to analyze our data and learn more about our business. In this video we're finally going to bring it all together and create this nice looking dashboard. And as you can see Andy is very excited about it. All right, so this is the workbook we used in the last two videos to create our pivot tables and charts. And in the previous videos, this uh, data only contained, or this table only contained data for December. And now we have all the data for 2014. So as I scroll down here, you'll see there's a lot more data. And we basically have orders for every month out of the year. I've already created a few pivot tables and charts in this workbook and then we're going to add some more pivot tables and charts and uh, ultimately create our dashboard. You'll also notice in these pivot tables that I've added a field up here in the filters area. So you can see that up here I've added region in the filters area. You can also see that over here in the uh, field list there's region in the filters area. And the filters area allows you to filter the entire pivot table for whatever item you select in this filter here. So if we wanted to see all the uh, sales for the East region. Now this pivot table is now filtered for the East region. So this is only showing the sales for the East region and these two particular salespeople are in the East region. So it shows us all that and filters the entire pivot table for whatever you, you have filtered up here in the filters area. And this is basically how slicers work as well. So I'll explain more about that when we add slicers to our dashboard. So I now want to create that sales trend chart. So I'm going to go to my sales by region chart here or tab and make a duplicate copy. Just hold down the control key when you drag it over. And instead of region here in the rows area, I want to add order date. So I'm going to take order date and drop it in the rows area. And you'll see that's added basically a row for every date we have in our order date column in our data tab and then summed up the revenue for each date. But we actually want to see this uh, by month and year because having all the dates in here is way too cluttered for a chart and it doesn't really make much sense. So we can group this order date by month and year. So to do that, I'm just going to select a cell inside the row area here. Go to the Analyze or Options tab on the ribbon and click the Group Field button. That'll bring up this window, this grouping window, and it basically allows us to group by different date types. So we want to group by months, and we also want to group by years. So I'm going to click the years and click OK. So now you can see we have a, much, uh, a chart that's much easier to read because we've grouped our dates by months and years. So now this is showing us the total revenue for the month of January and the year 2014. That grouping has also added a field to our rows area, it automatically adds in a new field called years here, and then the order date represents the months. Now this field is not added to our data source, it's just uh, only added to the pivot table here. The other thing with grouping dates, the one thing you'll, you want to know is that if your date, so I'm going to go back to the data table here, and this is the, the field we just grouped within the pivot table, the order date field. If this field contains any blanks in the source data, or if it contains any numbers that are formatted as text or not a date, uh, the grouping will not work. That button over on the pivot table uh, in the Analyze tab, this button here will be grayed out and it won't work. So that's one thing to note. You, all of your dates in your date field have to have a date that's formatted as a date in the field. Okay, so now we'd obviously want to retitle this chart. And if we want to make it a line chart instead of a column chart, we could just select the chart go to the Design tab on the ribbon and choose this Change Chart Type button. But I won't go through all that right now. The other chart I want to show you how to create is a distribution chart. So I'm going to go back to my Sales by Region. Again, I'm going to make a duplicate copy of this sheet. And the first thing I'm going to do is clear out some of the fields here. So I'm going to clear out the rows and values area. Uh, we don't need filters as well. So we'll just kind of start blank here. And I'm going to find the revenue field in the list here, and I'm going to drag it into the rows area. So now that's going to basically list all of our revenue amounts for each order. This would be the total revenue amount for each order in our data set here, uh, which doesn't tell us a whole lot. So what I want to do is group this uh, field. So I'm just going to click on any cell here, 
and go to the Analyze tab or the Options tab and hit Group Field. You can also do this from the right-click menu, by the way. You can just right-click and uh, select Group, and that will bring up this window. And now we want to group by amount. So this is showing us our minimum amount and our maximum amount, and then uh, we want to group by 1,000. So we'll just leave it at those default settings and click OK. And basically now it's grouped our revenue by amount, so it's put it in different buckets here um, by increments of 1,000. So the next thing I want to do is take the revenue field again and drag it into the values area. And that's created a count of revenue for each of these buckets. So basically what this is telling us is that we had 218 orders with an invoice amount or revenue amount of zero to one thousand dollars. Eighty-five orders with an amount of one thousand to two thousand dollars. And we can see that over here in the chart as well. So this is extremely useful information and I love these distribution charts because it quickly shows us by just glancing at this chart we can see that this company has uh, the majority of their orders are under two thousand dollars their invoice amounts are under two thousand dollars and then they have some uh, larger invoices out here but only a few of those so if this company was looking to grow their total revenue one way to do that would be to increase your invoice amount so if they had more invoice amounts in the two thousand to four thousand dollar range then obviously their total revenue would go up uh, the other way to do that would be to increase their volume if you got too many buckets out here and there's just uh, a lot of data on the chart, you can limit this. So again, click any cell in the row area, go to analyze group field, and you could change the ending amount. If I change this to 4,000, that'll limit the number of groups down to, um, you know, the maximum will be 4,000. And now anything with the invoice amount over 4,000 will just end up in this bucket here. The other way you could do that is to change the increment amount to a larger amount to like 2,000 and then that would uh, decrease the number of groups. Okay, so I now want to create the dashboard tab. So I'm just going to insert a new sheet and click the new sheet button or shift F11 on the keyboard and we'll rename this dashboard. And I'm just going to select all the cells on the sheet here and fill them with a gray color so our charts stand out on the dashboard a little bit. And now I'm going to go to each sheet and basically copy in the dashboard. So you can select the chart, right click and copy, or you can use control C and control V and then go over to the dashboard and paste it in here. All right, so I just copied in all of my charts into the dashboard sheet here. And I'm going to show you a few little formatting tricks and then we'll add the slicers. First thing I'm going to do is hold down the control key and just uh, scroll or uh, scroll down with the mouse to zoom out a little bit so we can see them all. And I've, you'll notice that all these charts are different sizes, so I want to make them all the same size. I like the size of this chart here, so if I go up to the Format tab on the ribbon, and I can see the size here is 2 by 3.5. Let's make that 3.5. So we have 2 by 3.5, so I want to make all the other charts the same size. So I'm just going to select this one, hold down the Control key. That'll allow me to select multiples. Then I'll go to the Format tab, and I'll make this 2 by 3.5 like that so now all of my charts are the same size uh, there's also some uh, alignment options so if I just click or left click and I'm sorry control left click to select both of those format tab align and then now I can choose from all these alignment options here so I could align left and that'll line those both up to the left so you can spend a little time kind of getting them all aligned nicely and make it look nice the other issue you might come across is if you put any text here and you, let's say you make one of these columns wider, that changes the size of the chart there. To prevent that, I'm going to, again, left click this chart, then hold down the control key to select all of my charts. And now if I go up to the format tab, there's this little button here to the bottom right of the size group. I'm going to click that. That'll bring up my uh, format shape dialog and in the property section if you're looking for the property section select this option that says don't move or size with cells and so basically that allows the chart to b remain the same size and when you resize the cells the charts do sizes do not change all right so let's add our slicer so I'm going to select this first sales trend chart here I'm going to go to the insert tab on the ribbon and choose slicer 
and that's going to bring up a list of all the fields basically in our pivot table and we want to slice by salesperson and region so i'm going to select those two fields and click ok and that'll add these slicers into our sheet here and so basically those are um, connected to this sales trend chart and if we s s click any of the options here that'll slice the sales trend chart you'll also notice when you uh, select if you select on the border of the slicer you'll get this options tab up here on the ribbon and this will allow you to change the properties of the slicer like the different colors the other one you'll use often is the columns if you uh, change the columns here that'll allow you to change basically the layout of the slicer if you want we're gonna leave this at one column so this slicer is currently only slicing or filtering this chart up here we need to connect it to our other charts and pivot tables so I'm gonna right click on the slicer and go to report connections it's going to bring up a list of all of our pivot tables in the workbook and I'm just going to select all of these so the slicer is connected to all of our pivot tables and charts and click OK and now you'll see when we make a selection that all of the charts on the page are being filtered and you could select multiple by just holding down the mouse and then drag down select multiple so we also need to connect the region to all of our charts so I'm going to do the same thing go to report connections just select all of these uh, pivot tables and click OK and now the region will be connected to all of our charts as well so we can slice for the different regions and even though these slicers are on our dashboard sheet they also actually filter all the other pivot tables in the workbook so if I go over to my sales by rep sheet you'll see that it's being filtered for the north region for the sales rep Michael and again if I go back to the dashboard that's exactly what my slicers are applying is this filter for Michael and the north region so that's why I like to have any any field that I have in a slicer I like to have in one of my areas of the pivot table especially the filters because now you can see uh, by just looking at this specific pivot table on this sheet that it's being filtered by the north region if this was not in our filters area you wouldn't be able to see that by just looking at the pivot table and it might get a little confusing so we've basically been able to put together a dashboard here with pivot tables and pivot charts and, th and then just adding these slicers to make it interactive. Of course you'll want to add a title up here and maybe your company logo as well and then line up all the charts and make sure all the titles are correct and everything and uh, also line up the slicers. But all in all we were able to take this sheet of data, this giant sheet of data and turn it into a nice looking interactive dashboard with just a few pivot tables and pivot charts. All right, so I now want to show a few new features of PivotPal based on some of your requests and feedback. The first one is a layouts tool. So typically when you create a pivot table, it's in this layout here with the subtotals up at the top and in a compact form. And you can see that by going to the design tab on the ribbon and you can choose some of these different settings for subtotals, grand totals, report layout. You can also go to the analyze tab and to into the options menu and there's a ton of options here that you can choose and select to make your pivot table look and behave a certain way. But these uh, options are time consuming to actually apply and they take a lot of steps to do that. So PivotPal has this new feature called Pivot Layouts and this window here will basically allow you to save some of your custom layouts and then quickly apply them to your pivot table. So here I've already saved a few layouts that I like. For example, this one shows more of a report style with the totals at the bottom down here. It also adds blank rows between each pivot item and a lot of other uh, settings that it automatically applies. This one, for example, outline with repeating labels is one that I created that will just show the pivot table in outline form and uh, repeat all the labels so this might be good for some kind of lookup if you're trying to look up data in the pivot table with all these repeating labels over here so with the my pivot layouts you can basically do anything you want any of these uh, different options for the pivot table you can change and customize and then you can save the layout uh, save a new layout and do all these things with these layouts so you can create your own custom ones and apply them very quickly. The other exciting news is that PivotPal now works with PowerPivot pivot tables. So if your data models contain hundreds of fields, 
uh, Pivot Pal will make it very easy to search through those fields, find the field you're looking for in different tables. You can see I have different tables listed here in my search results, and then add that field uh, to your pivot table. So for example, if I want to add the month field across the top in my columns here, I could just search month. I'll find it in my dates table here, and then just add it to the columns area, and that'll add it to this Power Pivot pivot table here. So I hope these videos have helped you learn how powerful and easy pivot tables are to use. As you can see, Andy's boss is very excited about his results, and I'm sure your boss will be as well. I want to thank you for joining me, and don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tutorials like this and information about PivotPal. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.